Hey guys, welcome to Functional Print Friday. If you like design and using 3D printing to solve real world problems and not just printing trinkets, this channel's for you. So I've got a number of things on the bench this week, including this nice pair of digital calipers that I'm gonna be giving away free to one lucky subscriber. So if you wanna learn how to get these, make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video. But what I wanna talk about this week is this right here. How many of you guys have a bunch of rolls of filament just hanging around like this with a little bit left? You don't wanna throw it out, but how often do we print things that are small enough that you know for sure you can finish with that much filament? I used to have a bunch of these hanging around until I figured out what to do with them. And that's these stacking part trays. But before I get to that, how do you even know if you have enough filament for a print, especially when you know, your roll is getting down towards the bottom? I'm gonna show you how to do that. First thing you need is a digital scale. And I'll link the specific one below if they still sell it, but it doesn't have to be this one. It can be you know, any scale that measures down to at least uh, a, a one gram granularity. Second thing you need is an empty spool in the same type of filament that you're trying to figure out how much you have left. And you take that empty spool, in this case, this is prusament, and this is, uh, I think they use the same spools for their PLA and PETG but this actually happens to be the very same type of spool. If I pop this guy on the scale and I hit the tear button, what that's gonna do is zero out the scale with this on here. And that's designed so that you can put some sort of container or something on the scale and measure the contents of something, um, or measure the contents of the container um, once you start adding to it, like so for powders or liquids or something like that. But it works great for this too, because now we can take our filament spool that has some filament on it, drop it on the scale, and now we see the difference between those two, which is 25 grams. So we have 25 grams of PETG on this spool. Now I think these are five or six different kinds of filament rolls that I used up here, but I believe this one is actually PETG. I'll drop this on, actually, I gotta tear this again. And we drop this on the scale and I, I know that these weigh about 20 grams in either PEDG or PLA. I know that because I print so darn many of them um, you know, over the years, but uh, if you don't have a print already done, your slicing software probably tells you what it weighs. I use Simplify 3D, and this is that design in Simplify 3D um, in preview mode, and it's telling me right here that the plastic weight is 19.06 grams. Um, and I think there's about a half gram difference between PETG and plastic just due to the density difference. Uh, but your software should be telling you how many grams of plastic you need. So if this was a more complex print and I know I needed, say, 357 grams of plastic, I could use the same methodology with an empty roll and a full, or not a full roll, but an empty roll and a partial roll to figure out if I have enough plastic for that print. Um, and there's hardly anything left on there. And hey, this is 25 grams. So I know I have enough to get one of these and still have a tiny bit left over, which at that point I'm probably gonna throw that last little bit out. But oftentimes we've got quite a bit more left on a roll, but it's still not enough for like a real sized print. Like here's the empty roll and this guy compared, there's maybe two wraps of filament on there. So I would not wanna use this on you know, anything but the smallest of prints, but let's see what we have left. I'll tear it with this guy on here. Put this down here. Look at that, we have 58 grams of plastic there. So I can't get quite three, but I could definitely get two for sure. And I probably weighed again as I got down closer to the end of the roll just to check. There might be enough on here even for, uh, for three. So let's take a look at the stacking parts trays. These guys are, I believe they are 80 millimeters in width. Oh, 85, actually, 85 millimeters in width, and I think they're 17 millimeters tall. Yeah, right about 17 millimeters tall. So they're a nice size um, for when you're disassembling things and you've got screws and fasteners and different things as you're going along. I'll put my screws from like the first part of something I've taken apart in here and stack another one on top, put the screws from the second part of it that I'm taking apart. And I've got so many of these around that I will have, if I've got something that's been apart for a couple of weeks because I'm waiting for a part or whatever else, I might have a stack of these, you know, slid into a corner next to that. 
and I know I can pick it up. I've got all the fasteners right in there. So these things are super handy around the garage, around the shop, um, even just around the house. So let's go take a quick look at the design for these um, in SketchUp. Okay, so here's the design for this, and uh, I'll walk you through really quick just the, the key design elements. This is a pretty simple one. Um, you just wanna make sure that these fit together nicely. So um, I added a bevel up here at the top uh, to help guide in the bottom, and then there's also a very light bevel at the bottom, um, and this is the side that would face the bed in the printer. There's no supports required for this. None of these are more than 45 degrees. And this stacks very well, this bottom outside diameter into the inside diameter of the top of the, the parts tray. And then this is essentially your, your major diameter um, as you have a stack of these guys uh, built up uh, as the, you know, the actual contents part of the tray. Uh, the inside is rounded and that is super, super important. If you guys have ever set anything down in a deep uh, tray, particularly one without any corners, and try to pick up something very small, it is darn near impossible. By having such a large rounded edge on the bottom part of this parts tray, it makes it really, really simple uh, to grasp a small item and sort of pull it up to that ridge where you can grab a hold of it between your thumb and forefinger. So guys, I think that is it for the design of these stacking parts trays. Oh, almost forgot uh, one more thing. The STL for this guy is available on my site, fpfdesigns.com, and that is linked down in the video description. And you could resize this uh, to different parts trays as well. I find that for majority of the work that I do, the fasteners as I take things apart um, fit well um, in this size. Okay, as promised, how do you get your hands on this nice pair of digital calipers for free? Guys, it's super simple. I'm just asking for two things. Number one, you gotta be a subscriber to the channel. So if you're not already subscribed, just hit that subscribe button. Number two, leave a comment below. And what I would like to see in the comments is your ideas, either for using up the last bit of plastic on the roll or what you use the rolls for themselves when you're done with them. Best thing I've come up with so far is just uh, wrapping Christmas lights and extension cords on them to put them away. But at this point, I've got way more of these rolls than I do Christmas lights or extension cords. So please, would love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments. Um, or just tell me what you learned in this video um, and you'll get entered to win these guys. And there's not that many subscribers on this channel yet, guys. So you got a pretty good chance of, uh, of winning. And these are a nice set of calipers. Uh, it's got, first of all, the display is like twice as large as any of the other calipers that I own. Um, it does millimeters and it does inches. Pretty much any caliper does that. But it also does fractions, which I really like. Because for this pair that I have out in the shop, um, if I'm putting away drill bits or I'm working with some other standard size thing that I know is imperial, um, I can just pop it right on here and I know, as an example, that's a 1364 drill bit. So again, guys, all you got to do, subscribe, leave a comment below, and I will announce the winner of these at the beginning of next week's video. Guys, thanks for tuning in, and I will catch you next Friday. <laughs>